Hi there, so this is the second row of the performance prep plan, the plan that I used the AI tool to generate, which basically just collated through 10 useful sessions that'll just kind of get me on my way to kind of sharpen up to get into something more intense, and hopefully it'll do the same for you as well. Now, today's one is gonna be a nice low intensity row. We're gonna do 30 minutes at 20 strokes a minute. And as far as intensity is concerned, well, pick whatever one works for you. You can either do this at around about five out of 10 effort, which is kind of the same as if you were just walking up a consistent flight of stairs, or if you have a 2K training pace, do it 18 seconds slower than your 2K average time, or if you use heart rate training, do it at round about UT2, or a blue zone if you use uh, my zone, like I do, all right? So, we're gonna get into a four minute warm up, and uh, before we can do that, we have to set up our rowing machine, ta-da! So on a concept two, that means going straight to the drag factor and setting that to where you want it to be. If you don't know where you want it to be, then set it between like four and five. Because too high is the problem here. Too low isn't really an issue. Too high is when you have to really fight against it. And the same kind of goes on your rowing machine if you're not in the concept two. Set your resistance so that you get a nice feel from it, but you don't have to yank against it to get the machine moving, all right? Next up, if you're able to, please set your monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down. And finally, adjust your foot stretcher height if you can so you can get to the front of the machine and your shins point vertically comfortably, okay? If you're set too high, that can be a bit difficult. If you're set too low, that could be too easy. I'm in socks again, so I'm uh, set one notch higher than if I was in shoes, all right? So, let's get into this four minute warm up, and I'm gonna talk to you a bit more about technique in this four, min four minutes to free up time within the 30 minute row to talk about nonsense, okay? <laughs> Here we go then in three, two, one, and we're off. Right, so, follow me for stroke rate on this at right about 20 strokes a minute and we're warming up, okay? So I want your intensity here to gradually increase to run about that five out of 10, uh, 2K plus 18 UT2 kind of level. But I want you to warm into it, okay? You're not hitting the ground running here and going flat out right from the start. This four minutes is just gonna be to open your body up, get your heart rate up a little bit, breathing rate up a little bit ready for the main session, which itself isn't gonna be that intense anyway. Let's be fair. <laughs> and you can use this to think technique. So I'm gonna talk a little bit every now and then in the main session technique wise, just to keep you reminded, but really the main things you wanna think about in the warm up are straight arms at a forwards tilt at the catch at the front of the machine, okay? So you come in with straight arms, forwards tilt. Roll until your shins are vertical. And then push out with the legs, keeping those arms straight in the forwards tilt. And then only pull at the back of the machine. Okay, so it's all legs from the front. And then pull at the back. And then let your hands come away past your knees before you bend them to help prepare you for the next stroke. There's all these other nuances about posture and things, but if you can just think, push with the legs, first with the forwards tilt, then pull at the back, that'll do you a lot better than most people. So let's take two more strokes. We'll put one foot on the ground. So one from the ground, continue rowing. Now this will help to open up your, your body a bit, your hips will probably, hopefully help you with this forwards tilt as well, because you're not quite as bound up by having two feet strapped in. And it just slows everything down a bit, or makes things simpler if nothing else. I think, I hope. <laughs> Okay, let's change feet. Yeah, let me know if this makes things easier or if you're like, what's he on about? <laughs> so make sure and just get that good solid push from the leg that's still strapped into the machine, okay? This is still part of the warm up, so you don't want to be tickling it, but at the same time, you're still not going full throttle, it's a warm up. Let's do one more here. Both feet in, easy for me because I'm in socks. I'm gonna roll with our back and arms. So this kind of goes back to what I was just saying 
technique wise so you swing with the back and then you pull in the arms at the at the end of the stroke in this drill swing in the back pull in the arms out with the arms rock with the back okay this is a really important technique to get used to is the arms away rock forwards let's do one more and let's roll to the front straight arms forwards tilt and press out with the legs holding that forwards tilt and straight arms and see what I mean here we get that power from the legs first power okay I'm not using my arms at all I'm not swinging my back I'm pressing with my legs and this is where like 60% or 50% where you only have of your power comes from that push let's take one more here right so have a quick drink keep on moving up and down the rail uh, I'll quickly just race across what it is we're doing one more time today and then we'll get into our main session okay then so here we go with today's main session we're going to do 30 minutes at 20 strokes per minute now for pace i want you to either do 5 out of 10 effort or 2k plus 18 if you've got 2k training pace or ut2 if you're doing heart rate training or if like me you're using a my zone this red strap on my arm i want to be kind of in the I don't know if you can see this in between like the blue and the, and the green zones okay uh, so i'm going to pick a pace that keeps me in there if i see it starts to drift up too high i will back off my pace all right but the important thing about today is that you keep this low intensity great like my t-shirt says don't push the slow stuff push the fast stuff you don't go on these ones too high or too hard you want to make sure you keep it low intensity to give yourself um, enough energy to then do the fast stuff fast okay right so 30 minutes 20 strokes a minute you ready for this just follow me for stroke rate here we go in three two one and we're off so right a quick a little bit of rowing stuff just before I start to get too distracted with other but other bits but remember this is one stroke every three seconds so you can follow me for stroke rate or you can look at your monitor and just count down in threes and then hopefully you'll get into the rhythm now for 20 strokes a minute really what you're looking at is a one second drive and two seconds recover and if you do that you should find you're putting in the right amount of power into the stroke to hit your pace because of course you can take a really lackluster long drive and a really quick recovery and be totally missing out on the power you're meant to be putting into the stroke so a good powerful push of the legs to help with that nice fast drive through one second and then a controlled arms away forwards rock knees bend to bring you forwards and the recovery and then just try and keep that rhythm going for 30 minutes <sighs> so not that I ever particularly script anything that I talk about when I do these rows but it did occur to me that quite a lot of the recent rows that I've done I've been quite heavy on the always talking technique and not really just talking away to you for company which on a 30 minute 20 strokes a minute row it's kind of what you want once you've got that rhythm and you've got the feel for pushing from the front with your legs it's really just about keeping it going for 30 minutes so you just get yourself locked in meditate away onto your stroke how it feels and I'll just waffle away keep you distracted cover the half hour and hopefully you'll be like oh we're done <laughs> of course the downside is you have to put up with me for another 27 minutes talking rubbish <laughs> but I did actually think about or at least well sorry I'll rewind back a little bit this morning 
I made a huge change to my morning routine for the first time in three years. And that's because I had breakfast. <laughs> yeah, that's how exciting I am that having breakfast is an incredible change to my life. <laughs> and so I then recorded a short video for YouTube Shorts, kind of saying change is important and that I would then talk about it in today's row. And so I think this is one of the first few times I've properly given a little bit of thought as to what nonsense I'll talk to you about in a row even if it is just an overarching change <laughs> and don't worry I'm not saying I'm going to change what I'm doing with the row-alongs or suggest that you change and go elsewhere no 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 what I'm saying is it's always useful to just look around you and address the things that you do especially for a routine point of view and just think are they still right for me? Is this working? Am I holding on to ideas and routines that you've either outgrown or just don't quite put you in the right direction and so this is all started off with me eating breakfast <laughs> because ever since the summer of 2020 I've been doing the 16-8 fast thing not particularly from a diet point of view but more about energy management where I was finding that if I had breakfast come three o'clock I'd have that real kind of nodding dog syndrome at my desk but usually that was because I'd have breakfast and then I'd have a quite large carby meal as well for lunch and yeah I might train before that meal but just energy wise my wee body was all over the place so I thought try 16-8 don't eat after 10 o'clock at night don't eat again until two o'clock the next day and see what that does and it really did settle things down but what I've come to realize is that it settled things down for lunch but as I've increased the amount of training I've been doing over the past six months because of finding this high rocks thing what's happening is that I'm okay for my lunchtime row and things but when it comes to training later on in the day as well doing weights I'm exhausted and so I was speaking to a nutritionist yesterday at Rocks Life R-O-X-L-Y-F-E and we're going to going through how I ate and my diary and all that stuff and he's like well yes your lunchtime row even though you're doing it fasted you've got the energy for it but the problem is because you've not eaten you're completely tapping yourself out 
energy wise by the end of it and your body just can't recover in time for an evening weight session which is why I tend to go into the weights room feeling quite weak and certainly not powerful and ready to hit a full-on weight training session so it was Greg who said just try having a sensible breakfast put some protein in there give your body some fuel for the morning so that you're not completely tapped out during this row and then continue eating how I was and hopefully that will then give me the energy I need for a second session later in the day so I'll see, I'll, I mean I can't really tell you what's going to happen because this is day one of that but what I'm saying is that almost three years on I was the reason I was speaking to Greg at Rock's Life was because I couldn't understand why I had that energy dump when it came to the weights room and it just didn't occur to me at all that it would have been a 16-8 thing because I had the energy for a good old hard row now so I'm sure if I really properly looked inwards I may eventually have worked that one out myself but from speaking to Greg I realised that I needed to make a change it just wasn't working for me what I was doing before or oh, is my monitor just skipped hang on, right I should be back in it 20 strokes a minute, sorry don't know if I boosted up to 22 there or if I had that weird monitor hiccup but I'm back into my every three seconds and so that got me to thinking about my time well I could wind back far enough to all of my time in sport not just rowing but where I started off my first real sport was to play squash where I was about I don't know how old I was 16 maybe I started playing squash maybe a little older and found I was quite good at it this is where I first found the concept too so I'd trade on it for oh hang on wait a minute I'm top end of green for my heart rate I'm just going to use off of it here yeah okay if I use off hopefully it'll calm down sorry about that yeah so I used the concept too for a little bit of extra cardio training as a squash player and I was chasing that little black ball around a white box for at least a decade I think I was 28 when I eventually had to give up because I completely ruined my shoulder because the truth was as a squash player I wasn't very good but I just ran and ran and ran I had the fitness but my actual skills were rubbish so I stood on court hitting balls ruined my shoulder so anyway don't want to go too deep into this because I've actually just recorded a podcast with the 
steady state network, which I kind of did go for a deep dive on my history. But suffice to say, I had to change. And the next change that came was I got into cycling. Then I had kids and realized I could no longer go for five hour bike rides. So I had to change again. And that is when I found rowing, or at least concept two rowing anyway. And then a few years on, I then, well, had a bit of a knife sharpening incident. Cut my hand badly. And had to change my kind of, how I approached the rowing machine. And that was no longer about racing and performance. It was about rehab. And at the back of that is where Row Along eventually got created. And then as time has gone on doing Row Along, just from a personal desire to get back into performance and racing, the recent change was to look at this high rocks competition stuff as well as rowing. And then that's on a bit of a break for me. It's February, well, it's March 1st right now. My next race isn't until the end of October, which means I can change again and concentrate on rowing performance for a while. Look at that, 15 minutes gone already. So, what I'm saying is that change, well, doesn't need to be inevitable. There's certain things, choices I've made that have been choices. Whether it's just to move because of having kids or the recent shift to higher rocks or your hand can get forced like my knife sharpening incident where you have to think right what do I do with this information <laughs> and even looking at having breakfast oh I'm in the yellow oh no back off back off I'm gonna ease off a bit more you might be able to tell by the sound of my flywheel that I'm not putting in quite as much power as I was before. Still trying to keep to 20 strokes a minute. I'm just pushing not quite as hard with the legs, which is giving me a slightly slower drive speed. So I have to have a slightly quicker recovery. To be honest, I'm not a fan of doing it like this. I prefer always kind of having the same rhythm, that two to one ratio of drive to recovery. I feel that choking my stroke in order to keep my heart rate down isn't the right thing to do. And that's one of the reasons why, again, when it came to choice, <laughs> and I first started up doing proper rowing training and especially row along, I tend to train around a 2K average pace time than I do uh, heart rate based training because it just means I never really have to change technique or performance for the 2k training pace and if you don't know what that is then basically you row a 2k time trial and divide the resulting time by four 
that gives you your average 2k time and then when I say 2k plus 18 you just go 18 seconds slower than that anyway so I'm currently at well I've dropped three seconds pace wise but my heart rate has settled down so maybe that was a good change who knows <laughs> but change comes with choice so not only do you have the option to change you also have your choice of what you change to which kind of goes for the coaching thing as well I mean at the risk at the risk of saying this and then suddenly you go looking elsewhere you have to make sure that the coaching the training the people you surround yourself with are right for you right now and from my rowing point of view that's been spot on for me when I first got into kind of into proper rowing or indoor rowing and I joined the free spirits team they were the right people to kind of nurture me and guide me through my kind of uh, my initial development into racing and things but then I moved to Fitness Matters where the team ethos there Sam the coach everything aligned with what I wanted to do but then out the back of injury and a few other things it became less right for me it's a bit too unrelenting in terms of you must be able to achieve this so like look at this 2k plus 18 thing as far as their training plans are concerned 2k plus 18 should be really low intensity and manageable this should be your 5 out of 10 effort but it doesn't really allow for the difference in people's abilities it's not really a cookie cutter solution which is why I do tend to give especially nowadays the advice of if heart rate based training works for you in terms of intensity then do it if you feel that mafetone style training where it's like really low intensity for 80% and then really high intensity for 20% or even like 90% 10% and if that works for you that you're getting fitter you're seeing your results then don't let anyone else change your mind it's quite easy to be affected by outside forces in a negative way it's kind of takes you into the tech world of technique where there's lots of people with amazing raw talent that suddenly start to listen to people saying oh no you must do this you must do that and then they lose their pace and their talent because they're trying to conform to this rowing technique ideal because after all when it comes to technique the three things I look at are injury prevention power and efficiency so even ignoring injury prevention if you're going 
as fast as you want for as long as you want then unless you're feeling that you've plateaued and you just can't improve anymore if you're pulling from the front and yeah not really following the legs back arms dogma of rowing is it right for someone to tell you you're doing it wrong or should you just say you know what i'm happy i'm not injured i'm going as fast as i want why change of course if you are getting injured or you are plateauing not able to go as fast as you want or as long as you want then that is when technique can be something to change if you feel that you've totally gassed your muscles in a row and there's no room for your fitness to step in then chances are it's because you're overloading muscles and not letting your cardio work along with it so you can change and say right how do i what do i need to do to improve my rowing technique to help the cardio side of things but again it's up to you the only time i'd really say that technique will play a huge part is if you get injuries like tennis elbow lower back issues a sore backside constantly or if even a short 10 minute row gives you ridiculous blisters then look at your technique because the blisters thing is often just people having a death grip on the handle thinking that you have to choke the life out of it in order to get a decent stroke in whereas actually what you want to do is hook your fingers over the handle nice and relaxed so there's less tension and friction and also more airflow and that can reduce the friction in your fingers the weakening of your skin because it's damp etc and that alone can stop blisters and then when it comes to lower back pain or a sore backside while you're rowing often that's down to posture lower back pain usually comes from people who don't have this forward lean at the front and hold it like you tilt over your hips okay so you don't round your lower back you're up nice and powerful and you keep that forwards tilt as you power your legs into the machine and what that does is it sends the power up through your body into your arms kind of uninterrupted whereas if you're really slumped and leaning back it all goes into your lower back and that's where lower back discomfort can come from but also it must be said I mean I just lost 10 seconds pace by showing you the poor technique there so that then comes into play for power and efficiency too and that posture thing is the same for if your backside's sore you want to be pivoting forwards and backwards over your sit bones with a good posture but if you have a collapsed tucked under posture what's happening is your sit bones are grinding 
over the muscles in your backside which causes the pain in your backside so sorry I just can't help myself I think I kind of <laughs> I heard my brain say technique I went oh I've got to talk technique for the next four minutes but as we get into the closing 90 seconds of today's row it's probably a handy reminder because it's right about now that fatigue can set in and you start to do weird and wonderful things to try and keep your pace up which I guess when you think about it could be another reason why heart rate base training for these low intensity rows can help because you have to back off as that fatigue sets in because it's likely that your heart rate will go up and therefore you're not trying to maintain numbers on a monitor I just think heart rate zones can be quite woolly to get in and out of the right zone and so you find yourself constantly adjusting changing the pace and the intensity you're rowing at I'd rather just say keep the one intensity keep the low stuff low and the high stuff high and you should get a more standard result from your sessions okay two more strokes one more oh, right Whew. so have a quick drink oh, and we'll get ourselves into a two minute cool down right and then we're going to do this cool down right about the same intensity we did the warm up at um, possibly the same intensity you just finished that off at but just disengage your brain and stuff this time so here we go in three two one go just find the stroke rate and intensity which you're comfortable rowing at but you can go back to thinking about your technique again okay so it gives you time to think okay right so arm straight rock forwards move in push for the legs arm straight rock forwards move in push through the legs and you think right only to shins vertical I don't want to over compress into the front if you go racing forwards what happens is your backside escapes from underneath you before you get to push in the power from your legs so that's why uh, it's just a great I mean there's there there are a few reasons why you don't want to go past shins vertical from like a power point of view anyway but that escaping butt from coming in way too high before you get the power in is a huge one and it's kind of also why you may have read seen watched whatever people saying don't lift the heels as you come forwards and it's not that heels up is a bad thing it's that usually heels up means you're coming way past that shins vertical point way or that your posture's not very good so if I'm rolling backwards and I get my or like my hips are rolled backwards sorry and then in order to get my shins to vertical my heels have to come way off the foot plate because of the body angle of my hips and my knees and things whereas with a good posture okay I can get forwards shins vertical heels aren't coming off the foot plate by that much and then I can power my legs into the machine to add that power to the stroke right so let's get through some stretching nice and quick okay I'm going to do this fast today so uh, watch the guy in the top put stretchy John he'll take you through it a little bit slower possibly um, yeah he might run on to the end so we're going to do hamstrings first so put both feet in I'm probably not going to do this fast to be honest <laughs> put both feet back in uh, get your legs nice and straight hands in the air and fold forwards okay Th that cue there the, the, me saying fold instead of 
uh, lean or whatever is really important. You want to fold forwards, and that's what kind of elongates the the muscles and things and things, yeah, muscles <laughs> in your hamstrings and gives them that stretch. Okay, so you really should be feeling this in your hamstrings. Um, slightly different because I'm looking at the camera, looking at you. It kind of offsets it for me, unfortunately. Right, what leg do I need to do? So that one, yeah. <laughs> so put one leg, we're gonna do uh, glutes next. One leg up on the uh, row machine rail. Other leg comes over so your heel is inside the crook of your knee. Bring this knee across your body so you have a straight line between your face, your knee and your foot. Hold it in place, that knee, and then rotate round um, just so you get that force, enough of a stretch down here into your glutes, okay? I hold on to the back of the machine just for a little bit of stability here. You can hold on to nothing if you wish. You can be uh, just free and loose if you want. But just make sure you've got this feeling of a stretch here. You should really feel it right down basically where your, yeah, where your glutes are. And then it should just radiate up and through as you do that stretch, okay? It's just, it's not a huge, it doesn't come all the way up into your hamstrings and your quads. But you should just feel this little bit of a radiation of that stretch through your glutes, okay? I'm going to tell you to be rude and I'm going to face away from you as I do the other one. And you should, I mean, what's interesting sometimes is when you do this and it's a single leg on either side and then you go, oh, hang on, my left leg's a lot tighter than my right leg. And you can often um, trace that back and then look at your stroke and you can uh, identify, especially if you're doing the single leg drills, you can go, oh, maybe one of my legs is more powerful than the other. I'm pushing off harder with one leg than I am the other. Right, let's do glutes. Oh, sorry, glutes. Oh, what am I saying? Quads next. So I'd like to rest one finger on the machine. Oh, oh the monitor, sorry. So just stabilize myself as I bring this. Oh, <laughs> it didn't work. Bring, ah, oh, there we go. That heel up on my other leg or one leg to touch my backside. And so I'm not pulling really hard here, okay? I'm just holding it against my backside in order to create that kind of stretch down the quad, um, which I'm getting. I'm not having to pull too hard. Again, I'm still looking at the angle of how my how that quad is pointing to the floor. Um, I really should be doing this. I've obviously got very tight quads. So I really should be doing this a lot more often. Swap legs. Oh, it's the same thing. Bring the foot up, touch the, make sure the heel is kind of touching your backside if you can. I mean, am, am I touching? I'm not too sure. Because um, it feels like this leg is a lot tighter. So obviously my left leg is tighter than my right, um, judging by, well, so far from the glutes and now this stretch. So um, possibly I'm pushing off a lot harder from my left leg than I am from my right and it's getting a lot more use being, so I'm just kicking my shoes out of the way, being left-footed or left-handed that's probably quite lightly. So let's do uh, what we do next, uh, hip flexors. So put one foot on the ground in front of you, so you have, so your knees right above, knees above your ankle, other legs behind you, basically got 90 degree angles between both legs, and then send your body forwards, but still keep your posture right. So what that does is it closes off the angle on your front knee, and it opens up the angle on your back leg. Now I said in the, the video, the row one video, that what you do with your toes is up to you in terms of what kind of a stretch you're gonna get from this. I find that having my toes on the ground and my heel up and pointing up, yeah, you can see in the video, but hopefully that makes enough sense in the podcast. I feel this gives me a better stretch into my hip flexors. Um, whereas, let's change legs, do exactly the same thing, but I'll put my toes down this time. So toes are flat against the floor and heels kind of like a bit more of an angle. And then if I sink forwards, I just don't tend to get, I don't feel I'm getting a stretch at all here into my hip flexors and I'm really quite low down at this point and there's no way I'm, that I'm a super flexible guy that, that hey I'm so flexible I can do that so whereas when I put my toes up again and then go into this stretch suddenly I can then feel that stretch into my hip flexor again. Again your hip flexors do take a little bit of abuse when it comes to rowing at that point at the back of the stroke if you get your legs all the way down that hinge backwards and forwards does go into your hip flexors quite a lot so it's it's useful to stretch them um, but do check out Jeff Cavalier's video on the Athlete Next channel here on YouTube uh, where he's got a good test for do you have tight hip flexors. Let's do shoulders next so hands straight in front of you hello and then bring it across your body and then hold it in place with your other arm to just kind of add a little bit of tension as your arm comes across your body to stretch the top of your shoulder um, which again for a role like today Although we weren't going um, super powerful, super force, 
because it's at 20 strokes a minute, and if you are putting in power to do that kind of one second drive, you are, I mean, you're, the, the fly will slow down by quite a lot. Uh, so it's a good amount of force, that's swap arms, good amount of force you're putting into each stroke, even if you are just rowing at a five out of 10 intensity. So if you've got your technique uh, with straight arms and you've uh, got that forward lean pushing from the legs, um, the power is coming up and through your shoulders, so it's still a good idea to stretch them just to kind of give them a, a little bit of respite um, and stop them from getting bound up. Because I certainly find when I increase my rowing training, it is up here in my shoulders that start to get worn. I start to feel the next day that, oh, I was rowing. It's not muscle sore in terms of, I've been doing weights, but sore from that constant kind of chain of power through them. So uh, what's next? Forearms. So put your hands together in front of you, uh, push them together and then bring them uh, down and in front of your kind of sternum really. Um, but you should have like a 90 degree angle between your fingers and your forearms. And if you carry on pushing together, so I'm trying to work out what way I need to wobble my shoulders. It's my left shoulder is always the one up in the, up in the air, isn't it? So I need to do kind of that. Anyway, if you, if you carry on pushing your two hands together, you will find, hopefully, that you get a nice little stretch through your wrists and into your forearms. And also your fingers as well, because you're just you're pushing them together. And they can get a little bit sore just from that kind of hook over the handle that I was talking about. Let's do biceps next. I remember today it's biceps next. And we finish on triceps. So put your hands behind you so you're flying. Wait, look at me, I'm flying. But rotate your thumbs outwards, and that then kind of lengthens the long head of your bicep just by doing this, by kind of rotating outwards. Um, and it will give you just a little bit of a stretch. Again, your biceps don't take a huge amount of uh, effort on a row like today, but there still is uh, work that goes through them, um, especially at the finish of the stroke and things. So it's a good idea to give them a little, little stretch. Same with triceps, which we'll do, do next. So hand up in the air, down your back, touching your spine, and then use this hand to just help it back and kind of point, it, point your elbow more vertically up to the sky. Your triceps, Again, shouldn't really. I mean, the, I, what I find when I first started rowing, like all those years ago, is that I'd get quite sore triceps if I was really tense on the return, on the recovery. Um, I, the, instead of, hang on, I'll just quickly just give it a couple more seconds. Yeah, instead of letting my late arms be loose as I came forwards, I'd kind of come out and I'd be rigid as I was coming forwards, like really tense. You couldn't move my arms at all. And that's when I would get sore triceps. Let's change to the other arm. Um, Whereas if I have a nice relaxed recovery when rowing, then there's no tricep issue at all. So if you find mid-row or afterwards, you're like, oh, I feel like I've just done 100 press-ups. Chances are it's because you're really tense as you're coming in on the recovery after each stroke. So um, think more about just relaxing. I mean, I've got this cue of the, the zombie arms thing where um, you come forward like you're a zombie, okay? The only problem is the zombies are quite shrugged and you don't want to be shrugged. But yeah, nice and loose arms as you come forwards rather than rigid, okay? And that's kind of a good way to think about it. But like I say, don't put your shoulders up in your ears. You're not like Thriller, Michael Jackson, okay? So sh shoulders down, nice and loose as you come forwards. And that should mean that your triceps are wobbly and nice and loose instead of rigid, okay? It's hard to tell because I don't have that big muscles, but trust me. There we go. Right, sorry, I, I feel like I raced through the stretching section, but I probably didn't. It's probably just as long as, long as ever. But um, yeah, uh, I don't know how my chat went today. I felt like I got a little bit kind of, uh, it wasn't particularly, it wasn't an entertaining chat. I was just talking about stuff, talking about change and the importance of change and the importance of just addressing the things in your life, whether it's sport or whatever, that um, would a little bit of change help? Will eating breakfast for me help? I hope so. Did changing teams for me help? Of course it did. Did cut my hand help? Not in the slightest. <laughs> I guess because that kind of torpedoed where I was in my kind of rowing career, if you want to call it that. Um, but yeah, hopefully it was an interesting, if not, if not entertaining, it was an interesting thing to listen to for half an hour. So do let me know in the comments whether it was, whether I should just come back and remake this one. Although I will in a week's time anyway when we come round onto this one. So there we go, we're done. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on this one. Like I said, leave me a comment, let me know how you got on with it. Let me know if you did, if you rode on the music version or the non-music version, because uh, it's an interesting bit of A-B testing right now just to see what people prefer. So far, it's the non-music that people prefer, but I'd like to know whether you preferred uh, what, what and why and stuff, all right? So thank you so much for joining me in this one. I will see you in the next row. Until then, take care, be well. Bye-bye.